You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So the city of Los Angeles, we know it's got a homeless problem. We've, we've got unhoused people, I mean, in the thousands, is it like 40,000 people, 50,000 people, 60,000 people in LA. I mean, basically Skid Row, all of Skid Row is just the streets are lined with tents, right? You've got entire communities, blocks long that are, that are unhoused, that are living outside. So city of LA, via a recent audit, finds that it is spending up to $837,000 to house a single homeless person. Does that seem reasonable? No, that seems absolutely shocking, doesn't it? So what we're talking about today here on the soon to be not Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Let's talk about that for just a second. We're going to change the name of the podcast to News for Reasonable People. So what we've been doing is we had uh, we had that whole, hey, we want you to help us come up with a name. And I don't even know where this name came from. I think it's some derivation of something I had and maybe one of your guys' suggestion. Um, but we spent a lot of time working our way through this. So it's like saying Black Lives Matter. And you can't really go against that statement, right? Because, you know, all in all, say what you will. You can't really go against that statement because if, if you say, well, they don't, well, then what kind of human being are you? That's not the point. The point is, is that it's kind of really smart marketing. And so when you say, well, what are you doing? I'm just reading, reading a little bit of news. Oh, what kind of news? Oh, it's, it's news for reasonable people. Oh, huh. Interesting. There's so many different ways that we can go with marketing with this. Hashtag reasonable on a hat. I mean, news for reasonable people. We did a lot of research and it is literally kind of what we're doing. A lot of the storylines I read, they're just not reasonable. You got lawnmower man living in a street with 41, you know, lawnmowers in Seattle. You got people making double decker RVs into, you know, just crazy stuff. You got LA spending $837,000 per person to house the homeless. This stuff isn't reasonable. What's happening in downtown Seattle and what's happening in downtown Portland, that's not reasonable. So we're going to change it, the news for reasonable people. And we've got a whole bunch more changes coming, but we wanted to get that kind of out of the way. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, I have no idea what day this will come out, but um, by then we'll have a temporary logo up. We're in kind of logo development for all that other stuff and doing the transitioning because we went from Summit Properties Northwest, which was the name of my brokerage. All right, that's good. To the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. All right, guys, you're getting it further. You're fur okay, but now you're a real estate podcast. All right, we get that we you podcast. But it says real estate podcast in your title. That wasn't really working out because then that doesn't really allow us to line up with what we're covering with what you want me to cover, which is you want me to cover the good stuff. You want me to cover the dessert. You want me to cover the, 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 the stuff that you want to hear about. You want to hear about why is LA spending 837,000? That's ridiculous. It is. That's why we're covering it here on news. For reasonable people. And it's it's like I said, if somebody, oh, that guy, he just doesn't have a, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That guy's just a moron. Well, maybe it's because you're not reasonable. So maybe you need to take a look at yourself because this is literally news for reasonable people. Now, I think it's kind of funny, but it actually, when we did the deep dive into kind of looking at, um, you know, you look at all the keywords, you look at what's going on. Did you know that reasonable, a synonym for reasonable? And yeah, this is literally what we do. You take one word, you look at all of the other meanings. It's what you do when you're branding. A, another word for reasonable is conservative. Isn't that wild? I mean, maybe you knew that. I, had I didn't. I didn't know that word to word. But literally, if you're a more conservative person, you are known as more reasonable. When did that happen? When did you, when did you need to be conservative to be reasonable? And it's pretty wild, isn't it? it kind of says something. But that's another one of those things where I was like, mm, okay, well, this is our branding. We are definitely more conservative. But I think there's also... A segment of people that are kind of in the middle 
that may, maybe they have voted, you know, they voted Democrat over the years, and maybe they identify more socially liberal than, you know, socially conservative. There, I think there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, this stuff that I'm seeing too isn't reasonable, but I don't really know where to get my coverage. That's what we're going to, that's why we're going to basically go away from covering real estate. I know that breaks your heart. I know you want to see here and you want me to compare the median housing price of houses here in Seattle to houses in uh, Miami, Florida. I know you just want to hear about the mean, median, and mode. You want to hear about the standard derivation of our valuations either going up or down. You can't, I mean, you can't get enough of that stuff. Now, you want to hear about a biker gang effing up Antifa in Portland. That's the pudding, right? That is your dessert. We're going to go for that all the time. You can't have any pudding without your meat. Ah, not here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast, now known as news for reasonable people. Plus, the marketing is just going to be fun on this. Seattle Real Estate Podcast is like, oh, okay, all right. So you, you, you say some crazy stuff and you talk about some crazy stuff, but that really doesn't help with the algorithms, let's be honest. See your real estate podcast and you're talking about Antifa, getting into a big jam with the biker, you know, what are you doing? We don't know. Yeah, no, I'm probably not going to subscribe. I can't really blame you. You know, it's just not clear cut what this channel is all about. Unless you tune in regularly and you know exactly what it's all about. Now we're going to focus all on what it's all about, which is storylines. And it also allows me to go beyond Seattle and Portland. Um, but let's be honest, you're going to be hard pressed to come up with crazier stories than what's going on in Seattle and Portland right now. You really are. I mean, I look at stories from all over the United States. And it's like, well, yeah, that's not nearly as bad as Seattle. No, phew, no, Portland's got that one beat by a long shot. But a lot of these are topics that are happening all across the United States. And this will allow, instead of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast, which is, well, this isn't about Seattle, and this certainly isn't about real estate. This will allow us to explore other, you know, uh, dessert stories that we, <laughs> that are important. They are important. Homelessness and housing are extremely high on everybody's concerns. Crime, a lot of what I cover here is just impacting reasonable people. We're, we're looking around and going, that's not reasonable. This didn't, this didn't used to happen in my town. What is going on? That's, this isn't a reasonable scenario at all. What's happening? And so I, I think there's a, a large swath of people who are looking for sources of news like this. And that's what I'm going to provide. That's what the crew and I, editor, multiple editors and social media guy, we're going to provide these stories. And so it might be a little bumpy with liftoff here, but we've already lift off, lift, basically lifted off um, weeks ago and made some of these, these determinations. And I'll, I'll have a full podcast on this, kind of the name change process. If you care, talk about some of the people that uh, the, the comments they made that I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Cause there's a, there's a handful, you know, anytime you make a change, there's always that moment where you're like, damn it, that person is so right. And it's not what I want to hear, but it's what I need to hear. So I'll be talking about that at some point in time. So thank you to everybody who stuck with the formerly known as the Seattle real estate podcast, currently known as news for reasonable people. You're reasonable. I'm reasonable. Let's do this. All right. Hashtag reasonable. Oh, yeah. Because if, if you say, well, you're not, I'm not reasonable. That's why I don't like you. Oh, hmm. all right. Well, I'm just going to stay over here being reasonable. So you do your thing over there and we'll all get along. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be funny. A $1.2 billion program? Billion. All right. That's not reasonable, is it? $1.2 billion program intended to quickly build housing for Los Angeles sprawling homeless population is moving too slowly while costs are spiking, with one project under development expected to hit as much as $837,000 per each housing unit. That's a city audit disclosed Wednesday. I have seen the deep dive on some of these numbers. It, it, it's mind blowing that we can't have a less pricey ta price tag. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's way beyond not reasonable, right? 
and you look at all the, and you're like, is this, is this really, we need almost a million dollar per unit for some of the housing going up in LA for these people to get a grasp on their lives to the point where they're no longer homeless, they're no longer living outside. Is this really the direction we're going in? And the answer is yes. And that is where we are right now. So 837, hmm, that seems like a lot. About 1,200 units have been completed since voters approved the spending in 2016, which was then a centerpiece in a strategy intended to get thousands of people off the streets. But the tally of units built so far is wholly inadequate in the context of the homeless crisis, said the audit issued by city controller Ron Galperin. My thought is, all right, so you got 40,000 people in L.A., So miraculously, somehow you build, and I'm just throwing that out there as a number. I don't know what LA's homeless population is. I think it's somewhere. Uh, It's it's probably way beyond that. Um, And we never really know. We do these um, point in time counts, but the whole reason we, you know, uh, a number of places didn't want to do the point in time counts this year and last year is because you had whole COVID. But we also think that it really underestimates the number that are homeless out there because it's hard. It's like, you know, it's like herding what wild cats is the saying, I think. You can't really get a you know, people are living in all kinds of different circumstances. They're very mobile at times. And uh, and then when they've got garbage all around them, they're not mobile. So there's that, right? So the point in time counts didn't probably accurately reflect let's say we've got 40,000 Let's say we build 40,000 units of housing like like that, just willy-nilly. All right. We take all those 40,000 people. We get them their own individual housing, wherever that might be. That is not a small city anymore. That's a decent-sized city. You have now created a total homeless community. After that happens, all those people get settled. Say they get settled. Do you think the number of people coming to LA for housing, for that type of housing, do you think that stops? Oh, I, I see they got theirs and, you know, I'm, I'm living here in another part of the country and oh, that seems pretty, no, it's going to cause a massive vacuum if that ever did happen. So you, you create 40,000 units of housing. I honestly believe you've got to deal with the drug addiction and it is drugs. I mean, it's, we have proven empirically that there is very little alcoholism. How often do we hear about that? We do hear about booze now and then, but isn't that what it used to be? It was people that were just, they were, they were chronic alcoholics stuck on the, on the side of the streets. You know, they're, they're blitzed and there's always that one sheriff that takes them in, gets them sober and, you know, but typically they're not unhoused. Um, uh, in the downtown course, that's where you would see the house. You'd, you know, it's, it's probably not a term that you're supposed to say anymore, but you talk about bums. You talk about bums. And that expression, I believe, came, did that come from the great, uh, great depression? Because you had so many people riding this, the, the uh, trains across the United States. And, you know, it was a tough time for the, for the economy. You had the, you know, the whole blowout of the stock market and people lost everything. And here they are. And, you know, just a lot of people down and out. But here you've got an economy in 2022. Where you can go get a job. You want to go get a job if you're capable of getting a job that is available to you. It's not like the soup lines we had in 1930s after the Great uh, Depression happened. No, we've got a wildly different situation. So yeah, it's just this crazy, crazy stuff. And, and I strongly believe that you need to get it, you know, people with the mental issues, They've got to get squared away and because they're, they're not safe to themselves or anybody else out on the streets doing their thing, along with people addicted to drugs. It's drugs. That's what's causing a lot of this stuff. It's drugs. But people don't want to talk about that. Well, that's, that's, you're narrowing down the field too much there. But everybody knows it. And so what are we doing about it? Well, we're spending 837000 per person per unit of housing in LA. That's what we're doing about it. Does that seem reasonable? Mm, Seems a little spendy to me. But this is that onward going deal, right? Well, if you give them housing first, then, you know, they'll get better on their own. They'll figure it out. They're good people. Uh Uh-huh. 
Or do you do a little contingency, make housing dependent upon them getting into treatment, coming out of treatment? I don't know, something along those lines. Got to be some kind of accountability because like parenting a kid, if there's no accountability, guess how that works out? Mm, It doesn't. Not well anyway. So about 1,200 units have been completed since voters approved the spending in 2016. All right, $1.2 billion dollars. And it's been in place for six years, and we've built 1,200 units of housing. All righty then. Which was then a centerpiece and a strategy intended to get thousands of people off the streets. Well, it probably has. Unfortunately, it's in the very low thousands, like just over a thousand is where this $1.2 billion program has gotten us in LA. So in recent years, homeless encampments have spread into virtually every neighborhood. While the population has climbed to an estimated 41,000 people in LA, that's where I got this from. Many are drug addicted or mentally ill and violence is commonplace. The program is still unable to meet the demands of the homelessness crisis after 1.2 billion with a B. Galperin said in a letter accompanying the 31-page report, the pace of development is sluggish, he said, while the cost of each unit continues to rise and in some cases to staggering heights. Most of the units are studios or one-bedroom apartments. The audit found 14% of the units billed exceeded $700,000 each, and one project in pro-development is estimated to cost almost $837 per unit. The audit noted that higher prices for construction materials during the pandemic, including lumber along with labor shortages, could be contributing to rising costs. In a tweet, Democratic Mayor Eric Garcetti appeared to dispute any suggestion that the program formerly known by its title in the 2016 ballot, Proposition HHH, was off track. The program is producing, this is Garcetti, more units than promised at a lower cost than expected. It was going to be 900,000, but now we're 827,000. That's not what he's saying, but that's kind of what he's saying, right? There are already 1,200 units online providing critical housing and services, and HHH will deliver over 10,300 units of supportive and affordable housing by 2026. Well, that is four years from now, and in the first year, you did 1,200 units. So you better get a move on those housing. And and so by 2026, uh, what's the housing population going to be in LA then? 100,000? All right. So then you will be, well, you know, you'll be roughly... 90,000 units shy. Let's get, let's, let's be reasonable here because we are on this show. Say we're, say we're 80,000 units shy. What's that going to look like? Hmm. Total train wreck, right? Absolute train wreck. Is that where we're heading? Kind of feels that way in these progressive West Coast cities, doesn't it? All right. We've got one story here. Uh, it's a plan to to house homeless people at the former Sears store in Boyle Heights. It would house 5,500 people in this one project. It's a massive old building built in, I don't know, it's like a historic building. It used to have a Sears store in it, but now it's going to have 5,500 residents in it. It's, it's just, it's crazy when we see what what kind of solutions people are coming up with. And yet nothing, nothing seems to be working. Homeless population just becomes more and more. And I think a lot of that has to do with, and on the West Coast, a lot of this has to do with how much free stuff we give. We're totally making, especially here in Seattle and Freeattle. I'm supposed to talk up my home city, which I do. But, you know, if you're reasonable, you're also going to show the good with the bad. And right now, we've got the bad. I mean, if you want to talk about jobs and, you know, that kind of stuff, Seattle's amazing. You got millions of people coming here. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of people coming here, about like a thousand a week, you know, are coming here just for new jobs, let alone all the other people coming for different reasons. But you've got a city that's also got some issues going on, got some real issues. And those don't seem to be getting solved anytime soon. Our new mayor campaigned on getting tough on crime and going to solve the homelessness issue. 
uh, this this thing didn't pop up overnight. It's not going to get solved overnight. And just because you throw somebody in housing, you got a roof over their head and a window and maybe four walls and a bed to sleep on, that doesn't mean their addiction to fentanyl goes away. So they may not even move into that housing because they don't want it. They want to keep doing the lifestyle. And that is my concern with trying to cover all the, the, the cost of these housing projects is a lot of these folks are never going to get there. They're going to either cease to exist out on the sidewalk or in their tent, wherever they are, or they're, they're just not at a point yet where they're going to get some help. So focusing on that help first, that to me is kind of the big kicker. But it's not a very po- it's not a very uh, popular type deal. We just seem to want to get them off the sidewalks and get them into shelter because at least then we're not looking at them. Let's be brutally honest, right? That's what I think a lot of people think in their heads, but they don't say out loud. Well, at least they wouldn't be in sight. Okay, that doesn't really solve the problem. So, eight hundred and thirty-seven thousand per unit. Yeah, that's wildly expensive. But it is LA and everything's more there. I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of minimizing a really serious pro- problem. And that is how much money is being spent on trying to create a solution for homelessness, which is woefully ad- inadequate, not even from the get go, but from way before the get go. Cause you just look at how many units of housing that we're getting out and how quickly the population is exploding. And you say so you provide that housing for all those folks based on current numbers. Guess what? Yeah, you've got a massive vacuum you've created because now not only are you handing out all the stuff you need for, you know, homeless lifestyle, if that includes drugs, maybe it doesn't, but you know, you've got a monthly allowance. You can get free clothes, definitely get free food. That's not an issue. You get free services. You know, you get all kinds of stuff in in these cities and and we wonder why our homelessness issue doesn't get solved and why our numbers continue to spike through the roof. Well, it's because we're enabling a lifestyle and people don't want to see it that way. They want to see it as these people were priced out of their homes due to lack of affordable housing. They can no longer afford anything there. And then the massive jump is then they go to living in a tent. That's skipping over a lot of steps, isn't it? That's just not a reasonable, you know, conclusion. Well, they got evicted and just because you get evicted doesn't mean that you immediately go to living in a tent in the park. That's not the, that's not the vast majority, but that's what we're told is the reason these people are living there because of affordable housing. No. That's not the case. That is just flat out not the case. It might be for a very, very small portion of folks who get impacted, but eventually, you know, eventually the, the story goes, yeah, I was couch surfing here, but my drug issue got in the way. And then I got kicked out of here and then I lost my car. And, you know, one of the, it, they're super sad stories. Don't get me wrong. They are sad stories, but a lot of times they are sad stories because people have made choices. And nobody wants to take, nobody wants to talk about, hey, these people got here by making choices. You know, you reap what you sow. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that we will be covering here, those topics and kind of getting into some of the, all right. So we've bitched about this for a long time. What's a solution? What is a solution? And those are, that's why I do, you know, stories on Andrea Suarez of We Heart Seattle. She's coming up with real solutions that may not be perfect. They don't tick off every box within the city of what they'd like to see coming from, you know, volunteer. But it's a reasonable solution that results in really good results. You picked up picked up how many hundreds of thousands of pounds of garbage out of the homeless encampments, which are in our city parks? Oh, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. So these are some of the topics we'll be covering here. um, And I will do my first sign off. Thanks again for being here. I'd love to have you subscribe. You'll see me again here very soon on news for reasonable people. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon. Bye for now.